Good evening and welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. I hope you've uh, enjoyed your day thus far. And you're settling in for a nice pleasant evening in front of the TV with friends and family. Uh, well, uh, when you're talking to friends, when you're talking to family, we are talking a very diverse uh, and mixed cultural uh, melting pot here in Dubai. It's one of the great values of this city, bringing together over 200 nationalities under one city premise. Uh, how do you get all those nationalities to mix? Uh, how do you get them all to work in tandem? That is something we're going to be looking at in detail tonight right here on the show. That's one of the main themes and there are many others. Let's have a look and see what's coming up. I head down to PwC Middle East to find out all about Watani, the award-winning emiratization program helping to identify top talents in the UAE. And talented singer Joseph Tartarian joins us in the studio for a performance that you're not going to want to miss. Guys, cultural etiquette today. How was it when you first moved to Dubai? Do you remember it's hard to like expose yourself to all these new cultures and nationality or did you blend right in? Well, I probably offended a lot of people in the first <laughs> few months of me living here. <laughs> I was clueless, you know, I'd never really lived outside of the UK. I'd done short stints outside of the country, but I probably needed a few pointers in how to not upset people when I first moved what here. About you, Tom? <laughs> it's interesting you say that, because I think I came with a few misconceptions. I think I arrived and I'd, I'd, I'd sort of read a lot about about the about the city about the, the the region before i moved here um and i think i came and, and and thought it i didn't realize how cosmopolitan it was when i got here and i thought you know i had to rule by uh, live by very very strict rules and regulations etc and you know there are rules and regulations as there are in any part of the world but that that cosmopolitan nature that blending of cultures that that, that learning from different cultures, celebrating different festivals that I'd never celebrated before here. Seeing my kids grow up with other nationalities and having their influences around really have influenced me. So yeah, I think I was surprised, um, happily surprised by, by the first reactions when I first came here. Good to put the misconceptions to one side. Uh, and well, it's been the same for the last quarter of a century. So still here that long you're still off. here you're still thriving Tom but it's good I think I think one of those things that and you must see it as well as a, as a mum with with the schools they just you know fascinate me the schools you look at the makeup of school classrooms show me anywhere else in the world that has so many nationalities in one classroom oh no it's wonderful for me that's why I felt like as soon as I came here it felt like home because you know I was born in Greece I lived in four different continents by the time I finally made my way back to Dubai and I'd been visiting here since I was a young kid. So as soon as I came here and it felt so multicultural, I was like, this is it, this is home, this is who I am. And it just felt so natural to me. And yeah, it's wonderful. It but you, you see it in so many different guises, don't you? You know, we've got Coca-Cola Arena celebrating their fifth anniversary. Five years of the Coca-Cola Arena, imagine that. Wow, incredible. I know they do, they, they've had a few tough times during that five years, a little bit of closure, but you look at their scheduling, that is, that is indicative of just how cosmopolitan this city is. I know, you know the artists coming in are so diverse. You've got the diversity of the artists, so basically appealing to all the different nationalities within this city. That's just one example of how, uh, how that diversity is seen. How often do we sit here and talk about food? I mean, you can oh, yeah. find the cuisines of any nation here, can't you? True, true. One of our favorite subjects. I'm just about thinking food. about <laughs> Coca-Cola Arena. Did you guys book your Macklemore tickets? Yeah, Macklemore. Okay, just me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got those tickets. I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, so back to cultural etiquette. <laughs> um, we do have someone in the uh, who's who's joining us as our guest co-host, and she knows so much. She actually teaches it. Let's find out who it is. Hello, my name is Al Anoud Al Hosani, and I'm the founder of Essency Academy. Can't wait to see you. Yes, Alan Oud will be joining us right here in a little bit. But first, empowering the next generation of Emirati talents in the region, I discovered the opportunities and tools PwC's Watani program is offering to top talents. Let's take a look. My name is Abdullah Al Awar. I'm an associate in corporate finance MA. Between a Sayyid an associate in the deals line of service. Khalid bin Brek, consulting partner and amortization leader for PwC Middle East. Here 
here at PwC where the learning never stops. We at PwC Middle East aim to develop the next generation of leaders. Join PwC to feel empowered and make a real impact. I'm here at PwC Middle East to discover their Watani initiative designed to empower local talents and to drive national growth across the region. So joining me now is Mr. Khalid bin Brake, who is the consulting partner and emiratization program leader here at PwC Middle East. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So we know workplace culture is very important, yet it still remains a challenge. So what do you ensure at Watani participants fit in with PwC's culture? Watani is PwC's emiratization program. We developed this program to really build the next generation of professional leaders um, in the professional sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have about 180 UAE nationals who are deeply embedded across all of our lines of service from assurance, consulting, deals, tax and legal services, strategy and as well as internal firm services. And our program has evolved continuously over the past decade. Valuable skills in which I, you know, learned from my experience here in PwC would definitely be the strong communication skills that I mentioned earlier, as well as the eagerness to learn. Like I was always put in the mindset to overcome challenges, do my best, continue doing my best. And, you know, through these challenges are only when you're able to learn, you're able to grow. You can work on your technical skills along with personal skills, such as, as I mentioned, communication, you know, having that and bringing, bringing it forward all the way to networking skills. PwC is a, is, a, is a global brand. Any project that you work on will significantly boost your net network right away. And um, you get to meet global leaders, you get to meet your uh, global peers as well. And I think PwC, is, it's a platform for that. Well, it's definitely been an inspiring experience coming down and checking out this amazing transformative program that is making waves in the Middle East. Amy Down, a PWC then. Enjoy that one? Fabulous. Yeah? Amazing offices. Wanky offices, aren't they, eh? <laughs> Very nice indeed. Right, on to today's main theme, and our guest co-host today is a founder. A founder helping women cultivate uh, confidence and navigate life's intricacies through her entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, Ascensi Academy, uh, helping elevate a professional presence with expert guidance. It's a warm welcome to DXB today to Alanud Al Hassani. Alanud, thanks for joining us. You're most welcome. I'm really interested to get your thoughts on this topic, a topic that is is close to all of our hearts, but it's a part and parcel of everyday life here. You know, regardless of which occupation you're in, you will cross paths oh. with those from different cultures. Let's start with the workplace, if we can, the diversity of that workplace. You know, that's something that other parts of the world are striving to attain at the moment. We almost have it on a plate to a certain degree, but does the diversity of the workplace here come with its own challenges when it comes to etiquette. Definitely. First of all, I think uh, one of the main things that expats or anyone coming to Emirati culture have to learn is basic Emirati culture. So a lot of people, uh, when they come work in a certain area while not knowing a lot about our culture, face a lot of difficulties, misunderstandings and uh, possibly conflicts with some of their colleagues. So I think uh, coming into the UAE and Dubai specifically, uh, you have to be educating yourself a lot, uh, asking a lot of Emiratis as well about uh, certain tips and tricks on how to say hello to a lady, uh, what is the proper distance to give to a lady, and how to greet a man as well if you are a woman. So what are some of the biggest mistakes? Come on, just tell us. <laughs> I would say a lot uh, of uh, personal space. Oh. So uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, uh, expats do, are not very aware about how Emiratis, mm. uh, specifically women, love their personal space. Yeah. You cannot have uh, uh, a very close intact with an Emirati colleague because this is uh, against our culture, against our religion as well. Right. So you have to be very careful when you are getting closer to a woman. Also, if you are uh, uh, organizing a meeting, let's say, right. 
uh, within the meeting as well, you have to ask the lady if she would like uh, to keep the door open, let's say. So it's very important to know if uh, if you would like if she would like to keep the door open or closed. That was one I didn't know for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Alanud, can you tell me a little bit about your Etiquette Academy and how you are personally helping to build those uh, cultural bridges and how you're trying sure. to? So within the uh, etiquette classes that I provide, I have the cultural etiquette. Mm -hmm. Within the cultural etiquette, we teach a lot about how to blend in with Emirati culture. So uh, we explain how we greet each other, how uh, we uh, organize certain sessions, meetings, and uh, how to also be familiar about being around women uh, space of Emirati women specifically. Okay, amazing. Well, we've talked a lot, Elanud, about some of the mistakes that people make or can make. What about the next step? What about if a mistake is made? And it might be a genuine mistake, somebody's uh, not fully understood the culture here, if somebody's uh, uh, new to the region, etc. How, do, how does one go about resolving those mistakes? What's the best step? So the best way, I would say, is either to consult with an Emirati colleague, uh, especially if it's within an Emirati person, the, the conflict is within an Emirati person. First, first take it down with an Emirati colleague. If you feel that you didn't get the proper answers, I would, uh, I would suggest strongly to go to HR mm -hmm. and explain that a uh, small conflict happened. I'm not sure how to deal with it. Do I go direct to the person? or do I just uh, let it go? Because sometimes small conflicts, let's say, if you by mistake offered your hand to me yeah. and uh, you felt that is very awkward that I didn't give you my hand, let's say, you would try to know, oh, is it okay that I've done this or uh, I would go and apologize. Mm. So, yeah, I'm just <laughs> sitting here <laughs> like trying to think of everything that I've done in the past. What are the kind of clients that come to you? I mean, is it somebody who, I think we were all comparing our situations when we arrived in Dubai. Is it people who are moving to a new country for the first time? Is it people who are specifically focusing on um, moving into or entering a, a workplace that is majority Emiratis? What would you say it is? So uh, because the, et the, the academy revolves around etiquette, classes, public image, entrepreneurship, and uh, a lot about Emirati culture as well. I have a specific class within Emirati culture. So the clients are very diverse. Uh, I have classes as well for ladies that are graduating high school, moving into university, because I feel that this is a critical age for, for uh, ladies or for men in future. I'm still deciding, <laughs> but for ladies, it's very critical to know how to change your style, how to act properly, how to yeah. sit, behave, walk, walk in heels, small details that people don't pay attention to. So uh, if you're asking the, that question, I will say it's very diverse. A lot of uh, Emiratis, a lot of expats, uh, a lot of other uh, communities as well that are uh, Russian, Ukrainian and mixed as well. So uh, because they are, I think, uh, moving to the country in a certain way that they are not very familiar about our culture. So I try to also collaborate with agencies, uh, travel agencies and some uh, some ministries as well to offer certain classes. I did, I did notice your perfect posture <laughs> yeah. while you're sitting. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Amazing. look at that straight back. <laughs> Alanud, I have to ask, so how can organizations like, I mean, you touched on it a little bit there, but how can they kind of implement your etiquette uh, guidance in the workplace? So I do offer business etiquette specifically for workspace. So the best way I would say that uh, you need to be uh, uh, culturally aware by researching first before you enter any workspace that is more revolved around Emiratis. You should be also aware about other cultures because we are working in a very diverse country. And it's not only about Emiratis, it's about Emiratis, Europeans, Chi Chinese, Japanese, everyone comes with their own culture. But uh, I would say, uh, mind your uh, respect. Uh, I think this is one of the key things that we have to talk about and uh, dress code. I think this is the two big factors that people sometimes uh, do not follow because the dress code is very, very important whenever you are in a workspace, especially for certain ladies that are coming from different cultures, they would think that wearing a certain uh, length of skirt is okay and acceptable. But unfortunately, certain areas that uh, are more closer to government, it's a big, uh, big issue and mistake to wear certain colors or clothes to, to the workspace. Amazing. I, I mean, I always just thought it was about you choosing the right 
fork or knife when it comes to etiquette. But actually, <laughs> when you think about it, there's so many different elements to it. It's amazing. Yes. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you so much, Alana. The great you're tips. Welcome. And you're staying with us for the rest of the show. Definitely. So we'll be getting your input. <laughs> uh, coming up, we find out top tips to help you navigate cultural communications in your workplace with the director of Dubai Media Incorporated Human Resources Sector right after this. Don't go anywhere.